this is the moment that we were we readers in the 1990s and reading this in real time have all been dreading. Batman and Bane go head to head. We are covering this episode Detective Comics 663 and Batman 497. And doing this at the top of the month because I've kind of been looking forward to doing this episode a whole bunch myself. The Detective Comics issue is written by Chuck Dixon with pencils by Graham Nolan and inks by Scott Hanna with lettering by John Costanza and is co-edited by Scott Peterson. The Batman issue is written by Doug Mensch with pencils by Jim Aparo, inks by Dick Giordano, lettering by Richard Starkings, and is co-edited by Jordan B. Gofinkel, Corfinkel. Both issues are co-edited by the legendary Denny O'Neill and colored by the also legendary Adrian Roy. You'll notice that I am adding a, and appending the eight legendary superlative for Adrian Warroy. That is isn't because it's always been an oversight of my part. I should have been appending this much before now. Adrian Warroy, who died in cancer in 2010, has had, by this point in the comics, had an exceptionally long run on the bat line. She'd been doing coloring for Batman comics for 20 years by the book that we're at now, and she's going to keep going afterwards. Um, not just through the Nightfall saga, but beyond that. If you'd been reading Batman for over a decade before these two issues, you'd seen her work. Her coloring had defined the color palette of, her, uh, of the Bat books that you were reading. So, like... I'm not going to say that she has had, like, necessarily a narrative impact on Batman and the Batman books, but she has had a, a visual stamp in a distinctive way. Um, she's certainly still following the footsteps of other artists and colorists who have come before her, but this, but I do feel like her, right? Uh, in terms of defining the color palette of the character, while again she's feeding off of other artists, it's still a very distinctive stamp and marks an era of the character. And perhaps in a way that some other colorists or Marvel or even other lines in DC don't. So... It's not, it's not flawless. We had that one issue of, um, I remember right, it was Batman, which focused entirely on Jean Paul, um, which had some weird color choices, but that felt very much like an outlier. So, if I were wearing a hat, if I were doing back in the days when I was doing the hat as a gimmick thing, I'd be, my hat would be off for you, you, Adrian Roy. I should have been calling you legendary much earlier than now. And with that, on with the show. Detective Comics 663 opens with Batman and Kroll escaping, using a surface tunnel to get out. They make it just by the skin of their teeth, having to contend with a stuck hatch. However, they get through, allowing them to get to the Gotham River and to the shore. Kroll is picked up by Gordon in the GCPD. He's dumbfounded and awestruck, that he being Kroll, by Batman after his experience, and is kind of... I've already, said, I've already said awestruck, but in a position of almost hero worship to an extent, which, I mean, to be fair, is justifiable considering that Batman saved you from certain death and the probably most dangerous moment of your probably all your life in Gotham, at least that we've seen within this storyline. Batman, however, has used up all his strength and needs to rest for a bit before going home. However, Trog... Bird and Zombie are waiting. The look for Bird and Zombie is great, though Trog's wristbands with the giant spikes on them are kind of dopey. Meanwhile, at an unspecified police precinct, the ventriloquist kills the guard at the evidence lockup and takes back Scarface. On a roof, Bird, Trog, and Zombie attack Batman, and Batman manages to take them all out one by one. Finally, Batman manages to get to the Batmobile and returns home, only to find Alfred unconscious and Bane waiting. 
Batman 497 opens with Bane and Bruce facing off, with Bane explaining something of his backstory before Bruce puts the mask on for one more fight. You, you, you know who I... You could be no one else. This Bruce Wayne is nothing but a mask, and one which no longer serves any purpose, though my mask still does. A direct feed through my helmet, straight into my brain and bloodstream, burning my veins with a very special potion. The Venom Derivative. Venom, yes, you found some. No doubt pumped into the Riddler. And you are familiar with Venom? Yes. And you know what it can do. All too well. You think so? I think not. I was once made a guinea pig for an improved concentrate of venom. Trust me, no matter what your experience, you know nothing of my venom. The sheer strength and ferocity course now coursing through me is enough to break a man, any man, like a dead stick. H how did you know? I've known you since I lived in the hell of a dark hole thousands of miles from here. I've known you in my dreams. And I escaped that hell, escaped from my dreams, for one reason only. To find you. And break you. Why? What's it been all about? Freeing the inmates from Arkham. Watching me deal with them. Watching them wear me down. Was it all just to learn about me? To weaken me? There must be more to it. But what? Gotham. The ultimate prize. You have it. I want it. All the And all the deaths? All the wasted lives? It's been nothing but that? You'd kill just to rule this city? All for... I'd kill for anything. The silence a grating voice. The dark and the light and eyes that dared look at me. Then while you revel in it, Bane, I'm sick of death. I'm sick of blood. I'm sick of the chaos and madness you've brought to Gotham. Right into my home. I've spent my life fighting your kind of madness and evil. And now that lifelong fright fight brought me to death's door. My own door. I would not be here would it, were it otherwise. I realize that. And I realize that you might be the single greatest source of madness and evil that I've ever faced. Easily. And in that case, one more time. However, this fight is a one-sided affair, practically a beatdown. As Batman desperately attempts to fight on, desperately attempts to find one thing he can pull over on this threat, on the greatest opponent that he, as he has just said, he's faced in quite some time, if ever. We flash back to the toll these last few weeks, starting from the fight with Black Mask, have taken on him. From this point on, from where Alfred goes to Tim Drake next door, probably in reference to the counting down layouts from Death of Superman, the number of pa panels per page drop down as the book goes on, starting from six, counting to the climax. Beg for mercy! Scream my name! Go back to hell! I am Bane, and I could kill you, but death could, would only end your agony and silence your shame. Instead, I will simply... After this page is a single page of promotional material, one side with the little news bulletin DC thing, like the Marvel bullpen that they bullpen bull, bullpen bulletin they ran in the Marvel comics around the same time, and on the other is a subscription sheet that you cut out and mail in for the books that you want to subscribe to. It's a page that is expendable, literally. It could be anywhere in this comic. Normally, it's after the main body of the story, but the placement here feels deliberate. It's placed with that line I just read on the facing page. And then this obscuring the next one. So you can't just look over and see the resolution. It builds up hope that maybe Batman will pull off an escape. But also to build dread that you won't. So you turn the page and... BREAK YOU! Broken. And done.
And with that, the issue ends. Not the arc, but the issue. And that's actually important. It's interesting rereading these issues, particularly in the context of also having read, not for a recap or anything like that, just on my own, um, and rereading other people's recaps, the death and rebirth of Superman arcs in comics as a kid, the build-up to Batman's defeat is much longer than Superman's. If you did, if you were to bring up, like, a Nightfall Saga reading list, um, going a little before the numbered issues as we did, not like to Tim Drake's origin, but to when we're getting to the issues with um, Black Mask, which play a role here, which are something which honestly should be included here. Um, it is a much longer burn. Um, and when this happens, we know much more about Bane than we do about Doomsday. Um, we, like, I want to say see, Comic Book Resources did a recap of, was also doing a Nightfall recap. Um, and they started theirs at the first, at the first numbered issue of Nightfall. And I was, I was actually kind of disappointed by that because as we've seen over the course of this show, Nightfall didn't begin with the first numbered issue of Nightfall. That's where the, that's after the jailbreak has happened. The, after the Arkham breakout. There's so much more buildup to this that matters and it's important to know going in that when you start Nightfall, Batman is already an exhausted man and Bane is already a developed character, significantly so. Throughout the death and without the death of Superman, and even during the stretch of rebirth where he shows up, Doomsday is a complete and total cipher with no motivation, no divining the fighting course of action, and no reason why they do what they do. Bane is so much more fleshed out in so many respects. Um, and as we've seen from what we've gone through so far, we've gotten all of that information. We know Bane is a character. We know why he wants to go after Batman, why he wants to go after Gotham, what it represents to him. Um, from his experiences in Pinaduro. And so, while as an adult, I have warmed up in several respects to the death of Superman arc and to Superman as a character in ways that I had as a kid, I still think that this story, that Nightfall, like the fall of Batman... If you were to take the two issues side by side, Superman's fall versus Batman's fall. On the one hand, Superman's fall defeat is much less one-sided. We and we know that coming in. It's also a much more suspenseful read. Um we know by the time this issue starts that Batman is absolutely on his last legs he may be able to pull this off he may be able to pull one last trick out of his utility belt one last card up his sleeve to get the win over bane he could that we, we've seen over the course of issues like that one issue like the one off with killer croc which is in here for a reason that shows off that bane has an achilles heel and we could potentially, and that Batman could potentially like get Bane in that one thing that lets him win, that gets him the win. Maybe, just maybe, in this issue. But ultimately, we know that Batman is in a bad way, and Bane one hundred percent is not. And so there is tension and dread in this fight. And there is certainly the sense that even if Batman wins, it will have taken such a toll that he, that, that he would not necessarily be able to continue being Batman anyway. That if they did have this be a Batman, a 
Superman versus Doomsday level draw, uh, double KO, that this would lead to a situation where John Paul, or if you were at the time and didn't know that John Paul was going to be Azrael, uh, Azrael was going to be Batman next. Um, if you were at the time, um, you th you would instead lean towards Tim towards um, uh, Dick Grayson as being a new Batman. Uh, you would think you you would think okay maybe Dick Grayson is going to become Batman next, but there's no way. There's no way that even if Bruce Wayne wins, even if Bruce Wayne as Batman wins, that he's going to come out of this in a condition to continue being Batman for an extended period, for a prolonged period of time. Even if, even if he doesn't hang up the cowl permanently, he's going to have to hang up the cowl after this fight. Whereas Superman versus Batman, or Superman versus a Doomsday, that is... There's a tension there of Superman's coming into that mostly fresh. We've had a couple rounds between Superman and Doomsday before this, before the fight took them into Metropolis, which is what Superman was trying to avoid. But there is the tension. But but there is a sense of suspense there of he's going to win this. He's Superman. He always wins. Um, right? Whereas here is Batman can win, but it will be at great cost. It will be a pyrrhic victory at best. Um, or just not even at best. It's a pyrrhic victory, period, um, if he wins. And there is the possibility that he won't. And what happens afterwards? And so with the fight being so one-sided, it doesn't feel like a cheat. And to an extent, it doesn't necessarily feel off for Bane either, if you follow. Because this is engineered by Bane. I mean, yes, Batman was psychologically burned out at the start of this. When all of this began, when the breakout happened. Um, possibly also physically, up, burned out physically, burned out mentally. He certainly needed a holiday before this anyway. Um, not that getting your back broken is a holiday. But we... Like Bane's win here, it doesn't feel like a cheat. It doesn't feel like the new guy coming in and just getting a win out of nowhere for no good reason. It feel, It still feels legit. It feels legit. Like, it happened. this happened... Because Bane engineered a situation that this would happen. If there's if there's any cheat about this, it's that this is the first that this is like you could say, oh, this is the first match between Bane and Batman. This is the first con first time they've like really gone head to head. Um, Bane has never really gone up against a fresh Batman and knows what that feels like and knows whether or not oh. I can definitely take him when he's fresh, or I need to give myself an, an edge. And I need to think of a scheme to do that. That's the only way in which this feels like a cheat. And that's barely this. And this also ties into how the ending of this reads. Funeral for a Friend, what comes after Superman's death, is a denouement. The, the f end of the fight with Doomsday is a conclusion. Doomsday is presumably beaten. But Superman is dead, and the question is what comes after. But first, we have to bury our dead. First, we have to begin the process of rebuilding. And the implication is, is the question of what comes next is a different story. Once Superman comes into contact with Doomsday in Death of Superman, that's an that's the that's the start of Act Three. Superman's fall is the is basically more or less the end of the of the work, with the funeral as a denouement, like the funeral like as an epilogue. 
this, though, these two issues are act are the end of Act Two. The story of Nightfall is far from is certainly not over. And and what well, we'll what comes after this, what we'll get up to in the lead up of Night Quest, is the third act, and that starts next month. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Cost me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 